Welcome to Mike's Motor Works, and today we got something a little different. And while this may be a little bit more specialized, there is several applications for this. And what we're doing today is we are replacing the mid-shaft bearing on my Tacoma. Now, any vehicle that has a mid-shaft bearing, passenger vehicle-wise, this is going to be applicable. So you want to stay tuned. Check it out. So this is it, all right? And uh, we need to replace this. One, my truck has quite a few miles on it, all right? And um, although the mileage uh, isn't too horrendous, it is still a lot, okay? And what I'm noticing when I'm driving is as I drive, I feel a vibration specifically between the 45 to 55 mile an hour range through the cab. And it's not tire related and it's not suspension related. So, as you can see here, I'm going to take my drive shaft and you're going to see it has quite a bit of play in it, all right? And what's happening is, is that this thing gets harmonically to a certain area around that 50, 55 mile an hour range, right? This thing starts to shake and vibrate. So it is time to replace this guy. So we have the replacement available. So let me show you how it works. Now, it used to be that three quarter ton pickups and half ton pickups used to have a single drive shaft, right? And that drive shaft would go uh, from the uh, rear end all the way to the transmission. So what they started to do was to use these little half or partial drive shafts, and that helped with ground clearance and some other things, right? So in order to get this guy off, it's gonna be a process here, right? And our process is thus. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove uh, the back of the secondary uh, drive shaft from the uh, yoke here, all right? So we got one, two, three, four bolts that'll get that off there. Then we're going to go up here, right? And these have to come off here. And uh, that's a matter of, of course, the one and two bolts. And then of course, we'll have to remove the U-joint there. There is a nut inside that that we'll have to remove. And of course, we'll have to remove from up here. So a little bit of removal, and then we are gonna need a specialized puller for this. All right, John, what size is that? Uh, 14 millimeter. So 14 millimeter on both sides. Yep. All righty. So you're using your swivel socket there. Does that make it much easier for uh, getting into the tighter space there? Yeah, because of the angles. Okay. Yes, the washer does go to the bolt side, not the nut side. Okay. Yeah, pry bar. So for the watchers at home, as you can see, we're trying to do is this part here is trying to come off here and it's kind of sealed to that. Now, if you live in a salty area, this is going to be much more difficult to take care of where they use a lot of the road salts and such. This is the first time it's been off, so there might be a little bit of fusion that's occurring there between the heat and any kind of rust buildup and what have you. But uh, I don't believe this truck has seen a lot of salt. Um, it did travel a little bit, so it should come off. Well, we'll see how it goes. I'm just trying to get just a little bit in there because I don't want to. Here it goes. I want it to fall and hit the camera. There you go. Now I'll just hold it. All right. Now where? I'm uh, going to the front. All right, folks, off camera, you can't see it, but I do have a hand on the drive shaft towards the uh, differential. And the camera's in a precarious spot. This thing slings down, and there goes my camera. Okay. Now where? Hold it. All right, go ahead and let it down. You let it down. I can let it down? Yep. Mm -hmm. How far down are we go? It's down. All right, John went to grab the catch pan because we're expecting a little bit of fluid to be pulled out here. Ready? All right, going straight back. Straight back. Maybe. Perhaps, if we're lucky. There it goes. Yay! All righty. All right. Just on the ground? Yep. All righty. Well, that was fun. So this is our new uh, mid-shaft bearing. 
Uh, not much to point out other than if you look inside that white stuff, all right, that is actually pre-packed bearing grease. So that's helpful. So you don't have to worry about packing these things yourself. So if something goes wrong with it, hey, it's them that packed it, not you, right? Which is an advantage, right? Because think about it, right? If, uh, say, you had to pack it on your own and you put in the part and it turns out that the part was defective, they would blame the person who installed it because it wasn't packed correctly. Well, nope, they are packing this guy. So boom, there you go. All right, if so something comes up and warranty needs to be claimed on it, they're the ones that packed it. They're the ones responsible for it. So next thing we're gonna do is um, go ahead and yank off the um, uh, drive shaft, the, the secondary or the rear drive shaft. And what John is doing is he's actually marking it so that he knows how it lines up because these things are balanced, all right? If you put this yoke here, right on this side, on the other side, you're gonna throw off the balance. So this is a balanced assembly. So you definitely wanna make sure that it's marked before you go through this process of this assembly. Because right now our goal is to get this separated here so that we can pull this from the old bearing. So uh, just a little heads up on these. This is a steel shaft. Uh, the Tundras uh, use the same exact bearing, but they use a bigger uh, aluminum shaft. So be real careful when you're pressing these U-joints out that uh, they go out the correct way. You don't want to put too much pressure on them because that aluminum, you'll stretch it or you'll move material out of it and the bearing caps won't sit in there properly. So the aluminum is where on the Tundras? Uh, it's, it's the entire shaft is aluminum except for where the center support goes. So even the yokes are aluminum? Even the little Oh boy, yokes. oh boy, so you gotta be really Real careful. Real careful, all the way around. Um, and it really does help to have a press and to know what you're doing, uh, especially on those t uh, Tundras. Uh, spend the extra few dollars and take it to a machine shop or a press shop where they do nothing but drive shafts and U-joints. That way you don't have that issue. But on here, because we're dealing with an iron or anybody it's else steel. who's dealing with steel, right. you are good. You're good without a problem. Okay, but aluminum, take it to somebody because you can really mar things, things up. up. Absolutely. Uh -huh. So that's just professionals. I've seen it. Uh, I mean, we've done repairs. We end up having to replace drive shafts because uh, they didn't do it properly. Oh boy, and that's expensive. Yes, so we got the equipment to do it properly, but just for your DIYs, take it to a machine shop or a press shop and let them do it. Fair enough. All right, John, show us how it's done. All right, any guy in the DIY world will have done this before. You're basically pulling the clips off the U-joint itself. These are the retainer clips. All right, this is from my ball joint press. Uh, it does the same exact thing as a ball joint tool. Um, but it works really good on U-joints because it's a good, even, clean pressure. Um, it's a common tool you can get from any auto parts store advanced. You can rent them. Um, it's a ball joint tool or a U-joint tool. They call them multiple things, but it's mainly used for uh, ball joints. Good deal. And the key is just to make sure that your rim here matches, matches or is larger than the, the U-joint itself. There you go. Now we could do this on the ground or on any tool bench. Unfortunately, our benches were a little bit undersized for this, um, but if you are blessed with a larger bench, this should be done at least at chest level, but it can be done on the ground if needed. And notice how Johnny is kind of feeling his way to make sure that he is cleared on the back side of that press, because once he starts pressing, there's gonna be a lot of force. Now, would it behoove somebody to go ahead and replace their new joints at this time? Yes. Um, <clears throat> what we'll do is here in just a minute, we'll find out. Uh, we'll grab a hold of them. We'll put the caps back on it and do a good shake test and uh, make sure they're in good shape. And they look real good. They don't have any issues. Um, these are sealed from factory. These are the originals. And be real careful with the needle bearings. And we don't have any play, so these feel good. So we'll put some extra grease in there, Okay. and and that'll be that. So even with the hundred and plus thousand miles I have on there, we're still good. We're still we're still good. There, it's not not loose. It's not wobbling around. 
I can move, I can't move it side to side for this joint here. Uh, I can't rock any of the caps, so we're in good shape there. All right, so if you're a tech guy and you're looking at this going, oh, they need to replace those. Hey, we did our test, we're good. And we, if it's wrong, you know, hey, if you suggest your customer replace them, then replace them. That's fine. If you're on this watch this thing going, man, I got to replace them, then replace them. Yeah, it's fine. We, when we do these these center support bearings, we replace the U joints as part of the quote. I mean, it's just you know saving 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 the customer money. There you go. You know that's what it comes down to. But for this scenario, you know when we do this every day, I mean we can get underneath there and and do this at home. Uh, but we're really mainly focusing on getting this center support straightened out to get rid of the vibration. Um, yeah, we can go in there and replace them later without having to worry about taking all this apart. There we go. So for us, it's not a big deal. Very good. All right, so up to this point, it's been all millimeter, but for the bolt, is it a bolt or a nut? It's a nut. It's a nut. For the nut that goes in this retainer nut for the yoke, it's SAE? Yes, and it could be the thread pitch, um, but the 23 millimeter won't go on all the way. Um, that's a 15 sixteenths. Uh, and here's a, a 24. Uh, you see, it's got a little bit of play. A little too much slot for us, for us so, to feel comfortable with it. So I feel a lot better about using that 15 16. There we go. Note John's paint mark, all right. He's got it around the center, around the nut itself, the center point the yoke, and of course the axle, or the, the axle, drive shaft. the drive shaft itself. You need to hold something? Guess not. All right, Johnny, what is this okay. fancy dancy tool? This tool here is designed to pull bearings off of differentials for your side bearings, your axle shaft bearings, and actually what holds your differential in place. Mm -hmm. um, you could do a uh, different uh, one, regular two jaw pullers that'll pull right in here, but I don't really like doing that because you could run the risk of, of, of damaging and warping and uh, messing that, that portion of the drive shaft up, that yoke right there. Right. That's so yeah. I don't really want to do that. I'd rather use a tool like this that grabs it out here. Okay. That way I'm not having to worry about messing this part right. up here. Saddle, is that what that is? Uh, people call it different things. Um, it all depends on, on where you're at. Okay, fair enough. All depends on the shop. But the round dealies, the hoops, the rims. I'm sure somebody's gonna write on Facebook. It's a blah, blah, blah. And this doesn't need to be real tight. Just wanna keep good, clean support all the way through it. Good deal. And here's a cool thing. You know, we love our comments on our uh, social, or I'm sorry, on our feed. And if you have something that's good to add and, and will help benefit the watchers, maybe you see an alternate way to do something or what have you, please feel free to comment. You know, this is the way we do it. Um, and then somebody else might have a different way that might work better for somebody else. So please, you know, if it's constructive, feel free, have at it in the comments. All right, y'all, so it's pretty self-explanatory. What's gonna happen is, is as you start twisting this side in, this rod, it'll start pushing that side out and the yoke out itself, right? Because the yoke is being retained by the retainers here, right? So you got these little spacers, and as you start twisting in, it's on an inclined plane to kind of help force that out. Now notice how everything is aligned. We're in the center. We're not off over here. We're not off over here. And everything is in good alignment so that when you pull it, it will not distort or twist the yoke itself. Now notice how John did that. He didn't just take it and just start wrenching away right on it. It was little short bursts to make sure nothing was binding because if you do that too much, you're gonna break something if it's getting stuck or caught up on something. You don't wanna break it. All right, so you can see here we got splines. That's why we have that little mark right there and a mark right there so we make sure that it gets lined back up so we don't have any 
any extra vibrations or any unnecessary issues, we know it's going back together the same way. Good deal, and, and so it could be put on off spline. So in other words, because it's not keyed, it might go on and you might be 15 degrees off here, 13 degrees, degrees off, off there, right. so on and so forth. That it just ensures that we are back in line with the balance. Yes. All right. Yeah, nothing worse than having an unbalanced drive shaft. Exactly. exactly. So sometimes you get lucky, but this one may come out in two parts. Uh, basically what happens is the rubber right here can only handle so much. There's not enough room for this to really squeeze down and lock into it. Uh, you could use a two jaw puller, but I've already got this already set up. Um, <clears throat> but you're basically trying to get inside to get a hold of that metal washer inside or that retainer in there. And that'll help it slide off. So this may come out in two stages. So all you did was loosen it up. Yeah. There it is. So there's your main portion of your center support bearing, and that is designed to roll. Uh, but really what fails on these is that rubber bushing inside. That's what actually goes back. So now the next thing is make sure you got it marked. I remember we marked it bottom because it does make a difference. Now the exact location of whether it goes this way, uh, the Toyotas are marked. The aftermarket ones are not. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way it goes back in. They are basically the same. All right, but if you do have one with an arrow, that arrow should, should point towards the front, front of the vehicle. Yes. And this one is not marked. Everything looks. This is supposed to be on there. That's part of the shaft that's assembly. That's part of the shaft. That is not part of the shaft. That's nope. part of that assembly. Yep, so. that's that back. All right. portion. So this was left on there and uh, pulled it off real quick. So we're good there. It's probably the same way on the back one too. Yep, here it is. Yep. Let me see. See what was this part right here? Should come off. We'll have Johnny pull that off. Yeah, we'll coming off my hand. So yeah, there is no difference on the way this goes back in. Uh, just make sure that those the two notches go up towards the top. And go right back in. We're gonna clean this up and uh, you're reassembling. Just a little bit of brake clean. Just try and get some of the extra degrease and make sure we get a good clean surface. Good deal. And then do we need to re-grease it at all or will it just uh, on straight no, to it? No, it's, it's designed not to um, because it is a press fit. Okay. So that grease is just left over from just time and use. Yeah. All right. Now we do have to press this on, is that correct? Uh, you can actually use the original joint uh, once we get this banged off uh, because what you're really pushing in is the outside and that center over that little hump in there. Okay. Another for using, like you could use a rubber mallet, a dead blow, something like that, but you don't want to mar up or damage the uh, yoke itself. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get this thing down far enough where we can use that nut to press on the uh, bearing to the shaft itself. Of course, your visor banging on, you want to make sure everything's lined up as needed. Always banging in the center of it. That's where your most rigid force is support. You don't want to be banging on the sides because you don't want it to twist up and distort those rings for the U-joint. Gigantic pain in the butt. Get the bigger whacker. Yeah. 
All right, so we're lined up, the splines lined up here and here uh, because you got a different spacing uh, between here uh, or between the factory bearing and the new bearing. Uh, it is aftermarket, so it's not going to sit in the exact same spot, uh, but it is good and tight. Uh, it does move. Uh, it's a little tight, but there's going. it's going to be because, uh, well, it's, it's new. It's got to get that grease going through. The biggest thing is just making sure that this is in far enough and then making sure that we're aligned here. Is that correct? That's correct. Good deal. Now, obviously, from here, it's self-explanatory because you're reversing the process. Torquage, what should you torque your final bolts, your drive shaft, to, from your drive shaft to your um, rear end, what should your torque be? Um, I do not know the exact torque. Um, I do know it does need to be tight. Uh, you don't want to over tighten it, but uh, the best thing is to look up the exact specs online. Okay, fair enough. So we'll get that information for you guys and I'll post that in the description. John, is there anything else you think that the uh, watchers should need to know? Um, if you're getting this deep, replace that U-joint um, and also inspect your uh, output shaft seal oh. on your transmission. If you got a leak, you got the drive shaft out, that'd be a good time to replace it. Good deal. And so you're just looking for any kind of splatter grease, that kind of thing. Right. Okay. On ours, it looked pretty clean. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. So that's it for Mike's Motor Works. If you found this interesting, don't forget to click like and hit that subscribe button so you can see what's going on because there's always something different or unique going on here at Mike's Motor Works. So thank you for watching.